Who <laughs> they said that you're gonna turn in your typical media shill who won't ask me tough questions like Montero. Well, the thing is, guys, like, let's be honest. If we want a guy like uh, like, and thankfully, I never did anything to get like in trouble with any promoters. Like, uh, I'm um, cool, but uh. Yeah, you don't want to ask too crazy of a, we ask tough questions, you guys know that, but you don't want to go be such a dickhead that you're never getting invited back to any fight ever. Like, I'm sorry, that serves no purpose. Like, you might think that's like, that's what you got to do. It's really the, a dumb thing to do, honestly, because it, it's just, it's a really dumb thing to do. Now, that don't mean that's, don't ask tough questions. There's definitely good ways to word things, you know, when to uh, press and maybe when to back off. But either way, you can talk to guys even in the peripheral, uh, which is what I learned is where you get most of all your information is the peripheral guys because they're willing to talk because they even have their own little personal beefs inside their own little circles. And so they, they're they always willing to talk some shit and spill beans about every fucking body. Um <laughs> but uh, uh, where was I going? Um, shit, where was I? Uh, what was that going? Oh, about the the tough questions. Um, just asking like uh, good questions, respectable questions, is what we want uh, is what all we should ask of any. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely don't show up. There's also ways, like, that even when, you know, I can learn, you can learn, you'll learn things that are, you know, technically, you know, unknown, but you can then share them to us, say, where you got the damn info from and stuff like that, and you won't even have those um, moments if you destroyed your, you know, uh, friendships and basically you know, got himself blackballed from the industry um, for asking a dickhead question. Uh, now, that don't mean at times, like, certain guys you can't, honestly, like, uh, and again, there's certain ways to ask them. Like, that don't mean I would not ask Ward, like, how it feels, like, the, uh, like, you know, you, like, I could even bring up, like, the Jalen Rose shit, you know? Uh, that, you know, just cheating the wind. Like, we know you are. You can't deny it, Andre. You are a notoriously <clears throat> dirty fight, right? You will admit that, right? And see if he'll admit that. And if he admits that, then you can, you know, go through that door one more step. But you don't run up right up on him the very first, you know, question. So, you know, say something crazy ignorant where he's gonna, you know, uh, I mean, uh. He's pretty. He's a bad example, anyway, because I I was actually very nice to him, and he still blocked me. <laughs> I wasn't even going that hard, and he still blocked me. I've seen people who were his like actual fans of his get blocked just for being like, "Uh, you gonna schedule a fight anytime soon?" Just like curious, because they're like wanting to see their guy fight, and he would fucking block them. Like I've seen it, and he's like, "You believe this shit?" So yeah, but, uh, but some some guys though, you know, I, like I'm sure you could ask Carl Frotch like anything in, in the world, like you know, I don't think he would shy away from any question. Most fighters won't, you know. Very few are complete divas. But you definitely, definitely don't want to like go chill so hard to where you. No, are. I know that. I know that. But I'm like, not, there's... I'm not even we're talking about you. I'm just talking about guys in in general, um, like either that are doing it now or possibly in the future. Man, like yeah, you don't want to be. Uh, you, they're not these people. You, you can't uh, make friends with them. I see too many people, uh, too many of the guys, they try to be friends with these guys, like the promoters and shit like that, and then the they won't 
call like they'll try to be friends with De La Hoya and then when Canelo does some dirt then I'm gonna call him out you know and shit like that cause they think that that, that somehow they're gonna keep like I, I don't people uh, have you know fantasy <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll do a fucking great job, though. Well, look, Reed is pro grade today, yeah? He was at this press conference. There was a question that could have been asked to him, and I just would have been, I asked him a few things. How's he feeling about the fight? And, I was, and then I would have leaned in and said, wait, and I just would have been like, well, as we know, the fight almost didn't happen, and there were complaints about money not being in escrow. What was your experience with that whole situation? Because it was well publicized in the media. I just would have segued into it there. And these are questions nobody asked. But yeah. they're questions we want to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if, uh, I mean, even if you don't ask him, that's a valid question for his manager. Yeah, Laughlin. Or Debella, I mean. Debella. I was going to say, is it Laughlin or Debella? Yeah. Well, Debella. Debella. I always confuse the two. They're both, they're both Wolfie. Is Debella his uh, promoter on record or manager on record? Uh, I think I think the Bellas is a uh, promoter on record. I'm pretty sure he's PBC. He's the guy to talk to because he's handling it all. Technical, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy, uh, Montero had him pulled for almost had him pulled for a while. The guys are chill, just protecting his job. So yeah, I mean, he eh, needs an income. I mean, he, once you understand what it is, hey, it is what it is. It's not like you can't still get good content from them kind of people also. It's not like everything they do is forever ruined. But, you know, you're not going to want to uh, go to them for, like, you know, the lowdown when there's a, 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 a controversial topic. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in on my phone, Anthony. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna put the link for this from Streamyard into the chat myself. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Hopefully, the second edit I just did to this uh, video uh, that had the. Super World Boxing Super Series highlights, and hopefully once this is done, because this says the shit blocked the world wide, like straight up. <laughs> I've never even seen that before. I've seen like blocked in some countries, but this shit says it's blocked worldwide. So I can fix that. Um, hey, Ant, can you do me a favor? Yeah. What you need? Add my second one in. Gotcha. Lions. Y'all can still hear me, yeah? Yep, yep, loud and clear. Lions, man, lions, man. I know LDBC people here, and they don't come around, I swear. I thought always, that shit, I thought as soon as I started a live stream, they'd flood the thing, but kind of thankful they don't, actually. <laughs> Get ready to turn right. Turn right. telling you now man when it comes down to just doing the interviews <clears throat> I'm gonna do what I always said I would when it comes to interviewing I'm gonna ask the questions I want to know the answers to I'm a boxing fan I know what I want to know the answers to yep yep and uh you know what I what I really don't like seeing is when uh, like an old legend, you know, uh, a great fighter from, you know, the 70s or the 80s or even the 90s, even early 2000s, you know, is in the building and walking around, you know, all these interviewers and uh, they don't approach them because they don't know anything about the guy. Meanwhile, like someone like, bro, will be do you, a do you remember, like, 
And those guys will, will be so happy. That's where you'll get like those are the guys who will give you like the twenty minute fucking forty minute exclusives when they find out you know about their career and appreciated it. Like they're like proud and happy, and they're like, "Yeah, let's talk about how my fucking glory days, baby." You know, and they'll tell, they'll go on with you. Those are the guys. But right, these guys, no, no one ever. None of these dudes out there now even fucking know who the people are when they walk past. Especially these legends, because they have so much to talk about. Like, do you remember when Spence fought Garcia, right? Roberto Duran was there, and only two interviews came out with Roberto Duran that entire time. And they were two and a half minutes long. And for those two and a half minutes, Duran looked chuffed for people to be talking to him. If I saw Roberto Duran, I'd be running over like, I want to talk to you about everything. I want to talk to you about everything. What do you want to talk? Esteban de Jesus, how you avenged it, Sugar Ray Leonard, Montreal. I want to talk about it all. I want to talk about it all. I want to know where you got the name Hansa Stone from. I want to know what. I want to know everything you went through growing up. I would try and get a fucking biography out of that man in, two, in like in whatever time you give me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, they just really don't know what to ask him. That's the thing. They don't know anything about him. The, all they know is that he fought for Ray Leonard. That, so they'll walk up and say, hey, uh, what can you tell us about, about that, you know, for Sugar Ray Leonard's fight? You know? <laughs> the only question he ever gets asked, that's like for a reason. These guys don't know what else to ask. The old time. I would ask gone. everything, man. And now there's so many, you know, like internet guys that, you know, they don't know any of them. Not all of them, by no means. There's a lot to do. But yeah. Bro, like if I saw him, or I don't know, like let's say, let's say I just happened to walk by Barry McGuigan at one of these things. I'd be talking to him about going through the European, how he elevated Ireland, like bringing Ireland in with the UK, uniting Ireland during his fights, reaching 20 million viewers in in England live on TV. I'd be asking him what about those things. I'd even I would even bring up how every time he went into the ring, how did he feel? Because he mentioned previously before that a part of him died the day he killed that prince fighter in the ring. Like I'd be, I would try and ask him everything, man. Check out boxing scene real quick. See if any new news hit. End of the night. See if anything drops. So is this uh is this Haney fight on the Fury undercard? No, it's the zone. It's the night before, Friday night. It's the night before, okay. Okay. On the zone. Alright. And on that undercard, on the undercard, Michael Hunter versus Sergey Kuzma. Say that again. Devin Haney versus Abdullayev. The undercard has Michael Hunter versus Sergey Kuzma. This is like recent news. Porter to spar with Andre to pr to prep for Spence fight. He's been sparring with Andre. We knew about that so long ago. Who's been sparring with Andre? Uh, Sean Porter. Yeah. Great, great fucking uh, great guy to have in there. Here's his quote. Um, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, so he knows that I'm against the fight of a lifetime and he wants to be there to support me. He's going to meet us in D.C. over the next two weeks and he's going to spar with me in D.C. and get me ready for the fight. Uh, so we haven't sparred just yet, but we do, have, uh, we do have him committed to come and train with me in the next two weeks. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. 100 strength. So all of the strength and size. Wait, wait. And he also already sparred with fucking super middleweight Dave, David Benavidez, by the way. Uh, Porter, that is. And this Porter's is. Porter's been sparring with big guys, man. 
Yeah, yeah, he's getting so ready for this fight, man. And then his, they asked him about sparring him, uh, Benavidez. He said, quote, 100%, you could feel all of his, uh, the strength and size of that guy. Porter said of the six to two Benavidez, uh, then he said, quote, it was interesting trying to push him back. Ah, you see? No, oh, no, bro, 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 that's such a good fucking sign. This is such a good what sign. Say? Whoa, here we go, baby. Here we go. People, you've been watching. Porter just revealed his tactic, motherfuckers. Yep, yep. What, the, what he has to do, he knows it. Every, like, yep, it's on. That's why he's even working with super fucking middleweight. He's ready for a big, strong thing. And trying to bring in big guys like Benavidez and Andre, man. Andre keeps getting taller as well. Yeah, this motherfucker yeah. went from like working five nine to six foot six in the last year. Working on taking their best while trying to, you know, give you know hurt them while pushing them back. Because he knows one, if he can back up and find a way to, you know, start backing up bigger guys, it's oh, it's or he'll win the fight. If he, he, he then he got to follow the plan after that. And it's, uh, oh, okay. It was interesting trying to push him back, trying to be aggressive against him, also using my feet to get him out of position. You know, a lot of tactics we expect to use against Errol Spence. I think using them against a guy that big, I think on top of building your confidence, I think it's just another way to recognize what works and what doesn't work against another world champion too badly. Oh, that's what I want to hear. That was all good. All of it. And part is what? Three to one on the dog? Dude, I promise you, Spence does not have sparring of this caliber. By no fucking means. By no At means. At best, he doesn't have anyone who can replicate Porter. No, not really at all. Uh -uh. It's hard to replicate sparring. He can get Porter for Porter. Smaller types, but tanning. He can get now a shape tank Davis. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, really. That's the only one who's kind of going to mimic him in size and bulk. Well, I'm glad I actually read that. Then. That made me. Mm. I'm just going to try and pick up a win in here, man. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm betting on that fight, so I mean, I'm going for the underdog. I want to win. I want to win, baby. Come on. You can do it for them. Oh, mate, I'm telling you right now. After hearing that, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a hundred down on Porter. Yeah, especially if it stays around, you know, uh, please stays around plus hundred. Last I saw, plus six fifty-five. Shit. Uh, it's a good fight, though. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if we get like a plus 700 or something. Come on. I mean, it's plus 655 basically already is, so. Aunt's praying to the gods this goes up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Eh. I'm, I'm not. If it starts depreciating, oh, though, I'll get on it quick. At most, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm definitely waiting because you never know what'll happen. Uh, I'm not getting. I'm not putting money down even with the where the odds look great, where I'm stuck in because anything can fucking happen, and I'm not getting stuck on a bet. So I'm waiting till the day to fight. But yeah, yeah. I still think. Spence uh, is going to be a huge favor because it, it, they're taking into consideration the you know that he's basically the quote unquote gold out of the PPC. He, he's their future supposed cash cow. So Porter has to knock him fucking pillar to post to win uh, on the cards or knock him out, and that's it. So he, the underdog bet he might even legitimately beat him in a you know like eight four. 7584 decision type uh, clear victory, but it'll be given to Spence or a draw. You know, a draw might be a smart bet too. Lay like 50 on a draw to cover your ass in case, uh, you know, you lose your, your bet that uh, Porter was, you know, that you bet Porter to win, even though he should have. 
But so they didn't give it to him. They give him the draw because you might get tremendous odds for a fucking draw. I'm talking like plus two thousand, plus three thousand type odds. You know, so you throw like fifty on that, and cover your ass for you know uh, two hundred bet just in case. So really it's like two hundred fifty. Uh, you know, a couple outcomes. You're banking. A couple different outcomes you can bank. The LGBT mob, yeah. What's going on with the Montero A guys? He's still around, right? He's still doing videos, right? I take it he is, since I'm talking about him. Quick question. And uh anyone seen any good movies, uh good movies lately I can watch. Something I can watch tonight. Something new and good. <laughs> never. Never prime. Never. Ever. Uh, yellow do oh Jesus. Come on guys. Stop that stuff. The ice, man. yeah, I saw that. Uh, something about like the one about uh, Richard Kuklinski, right? No, uh, something a little newer. Anything newer? Well, actually, it don't got to be new, because uh, I just recently on. saw um, Killing killing Them Softly or whatever with uh, Brad Pitt, and damn, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time now. I remember when Triple G almost broke. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, <laughs> Marcos Villegas uh, gets uh, great interviews, man. Uh, I, I think his channel is one of the best for interviews. Uh, uh, Fight Hub, yeah, Fight Hub's the shit. That and Seconds Out. Him and uh, Raheem, those are my two favorite. Uh, doing like the YouTube, you know, interview channel. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Murder mystery. That's what happened. Is that really good though? That's the one with uh, Jennifer Aniston. I saw that all, almost watched it, but was like, is this really going to be now. good? I think of more like a drama. Yeah. Maybe. Eh, yeah. Still not to be like, not necessarily uh, like a manly drama, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Anyone think of anything? I know, man. Most movies are trash nowadays. That's why I'm fucking asking. Charlie's on the wire. Go straight on. Is that an actual name of a movie? BDA. You guys are no help. No help. Anyway. Go Glovkin Daria Venchenko. All seriousness, uh I know you're in your little Montero fucking hyper chat shit. No, I, I've seen his girl. Yeah, I've seen his girl. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, that shit, Triple J, uh, Triple J, uh, they shall not grow old. I've 
Yeah, I'm gonna watch that. I just haven't yet. That shit looks amazing. Get ready to what turn left. What percentage of a chance are people given Darya Vanchenko? The new promoter of um, Big Baby Big Baby Miller I, with his with his fedora, wearing I, self. I only saw something about it, but I didn't see what it was. I didn't even bother wasting my time looking. But I did, uh, like, I was scrolling through either a website or YouTube and saw something about Big Baby Miller. That, that's all I know. Yeah, well, his promoter, some young kid, uh, he got, like, a fedora on, and, <laughs> oh, man, it, it was so cheesy. How young? He looks like in his probably... Late twenties. Damn. I mean, he's kind of finished though. Anyway, honestly, like, uh, dude, I don't, dude, dude, he fucking blew uh, the lottery, the lottery, all because he was fucking just not man enough to fight one other human one other human so he blew the like lottery ticket yeah he he was supposed, I to, be, he was supposed to be ruiz. Ruiz. Nice guy again man he was supposed to be the ruiz yep <laughs> yep look how much ruiz is making <laughs> even if he lost it was still a life-changing lottery ticket yeah but hey, uh, how much did Ruiz made on his first fight? Like eight million or something like that? I don't know, but I know. It was, I, I'm sure it was a, like a five. I'm sure it was at least about five million. Because God, like, AJ has to overpay like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. When you earn that kind of money, they want a much bigger uh, payday than they deserve. <laughs> Well, that's but that's like that's the thing though. Like Tyson said though, that's the job of the cash cow in boxing is to give everybody a fight to spread the money around. Yeah, it's to feed. That's how you feed all the fighters. Yep. You know, but then then they criticize him when he's feeding everybody. Mm hmm. I know, right? You know, I'm not no fanboy of anybody, any boxes, but. At least when the guy's feeding you, you know what I'm saying, putting money in there and you going out there and you hungry, you want that, go get it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he talked he talked his way into that fight too. <laughs> he just talked mad shit and then got the fight and I was like, Yeah, uh, I, I really don't want this fight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, at the time that when he tried to man up on uh, AJ, AJ yeah, was like, "It's okay, it's okay." You talking about when he pushed AJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn left. <laughs> AJ, I think AJ wanted to smash his face in, yo. Know? He did. I'm sure he did. <laughs> I know he did. I mean, you know, you could just imagine if a guy did that to you. Yeah, your first in instinct is to come right back and whack. I don't know. I, I, it's a lot of money. I wouldn't want to whack yeah, him. No, not I, if you're AJ in that position, you can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if it was out of the regular thing and it happened, the, as, soon as, to, as soon as he goes to push me, I'm going to headbutt him right in his nose. Mm -hmm. Bow! I'm going to try to take him out. Yeah. Man, I hope you enjoy that movie, man. I'm just glad you put me on to something I didn't know about already. Oh.
That push was the beginning of the end of AJ's mystique. And I believe this year. <coughs> um, that push was the beginning of it. What do you mean, that the push? I guess he's trying to say that the, when Jarrell Miller pushed him, that his mystique, his persona, went away of, like, the, I guess, the badass, the new, new guy on the block badass. I don't think so. I think that invigorated AJ, motivated him more to want to beat the crap out of uh, of uh, Gerald Miller. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. There, fellas. What's happening? We lost you for a second, Rasta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it went down for a second. This is I, Nicholas Walters. If y'all don't use popcorn time, it's the spot. It's a free app, man. Popcorn time. Even if you got a, uh, it works on an iPhone, fucking you know, any computer or whatever. But got whatever. Oh, it's no. called popcorn time. Popcorn time. Yep. Sweet. Here, I'll uh, I'll share my. Shit. No, no, no. Don't do it. Well, no, nah, drop, uh, drop a link. Yeah, just fucking Google popcorn time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure it's a legit one now. Uh, yeah, just the very first one that pops up. Put yeah. popcorn space. Popcorn, one word, space, time. Very top one. Yeah. I mean, you can even just click like the Wikipedia page. It's on the side over here. You can get it right through there too, so you know it's official. So, yeah. I don't know how it's. Yeah, it, it is what it is. But is this the shit that you plug? You know. Uh, you know. You you know, can uh, put on it. Started up a download a movie. You have to. It's basically a. It's done like torrent style, but you don't actually download the movies on your computer. You're just basically streaming them, you know. So you. Yeah, you just, yeah. You know, I understand. Yeah. yeah, you can just put the uh, HDMI cable from your computer to your TV. Just, yeah. You know, watch them that way. So, you know. And they're all. Unless easy. you got a. Unless well, you got an IP hop. <laughs> yeah, or if you have that, yeah, that, yeah. All you the, know, all the, all the better. 
but yeah. Uh, Yo, have you heard uh, from Gonzalo? uh, When last time you heard from him? Yeah, I think yesterday. Okay, cool. No, I just want to make sure. Hey, that's, that's, you know, we just... Oh, yeah. military, military guys always look out for military guys and you know yeah. like yes, damn sir. I haven't seen him today uh, yes but yes yeah, I just, he was yeah. around yeah that's cool guy asked re- recognized the same thing and he was like yeah yeah he was on Thunderdome the other day I was like okay cool yeah no doubt what are you talking about, Bruce Main? I watched a couple. Oh, that's that he did uh, with Loma yeah. Chico. <clears throat> I didn't see that one. Uh, I saw one of his videos. He did. Uh, it was the you know, the AJ Wilder beef. One of them one. Yeah, I, I saw that one. He put Loma Chico as a, a deity up on the wall. Where Jesus Christ was supposed to be, <laughs> I was like, "Holy shit!" That was cool editing. Yeah, <clears throat> apparently Floyd's uh, in talks to do like another tension fight, just fight like another little. They're doing a nationwide. <laughs> they're actually doing a nationwide search for who's gonna be Floyd's opponent. It's like a like a Chinese American Idol, pretty much. Yeah, somebody told me. Uh, yeah, Johnny Boy had it on his thing. That's right. It's yeah. one of his videos. <laughs> Johnny- yeah. Floyd's gonna spar like the, the Chinese American Idol slash martial artist. So it'll be like instead of dancing and singing, it'll be about like fighting. But yeah, yeah. Whatever. Ridiculous, <laughs> man. When he can fight fucking Pacquiao, he ain't gonna do it. No. Nope. So he ain't gonna do it. No. Nope. Nope. Put it this way, look. When he first. Finally, after six, seven years later, he fought Pacquiao. And when he fought him, even his own dad is saying, Why you fight a skin? Why you fight a skin? Go out there and fight that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was pretty embarrassing for Floyd. You know, Floyd was really pissed when his dad said that shit. He's like, Motherfucker, this is our <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but hold up. Who, who made the video showing the original Pat Tar was Floyd Mayweather? Was it you? Ready to eh. turn left. Uh, nah, I mean, I might have talked about it, but I definitely didn't turn make a video about it. No, huh? I saw somebody and they show always Pat, uh, Mayweather in all of Pacquiao fights. He was sitting in the, in the bleachers yelling like, go, go. Telling yeah. Manny Pacquiao to, uh, to go after him. Standing on his seat, uh, jumping, screaming uh, when he's about to knock out Morales in the second fight. And there's another interview uh, of him like uh, a few months after that. Yeah, saying Pacquiao is great and all this stuff. Yeah, and they said, uh, uh, then they uh, go on to say, uh, but just but take yourself out of the equation. Who would you say is the best pound for pound fighter on, uh, on, on, on in the world? And he goes, Manny Pacquiao. Manny. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even hesitate. No, this is when Pacquiao though was, you know, like one thirty or one whatever. You know, one thirty five. He hadn't come up to his weight yet, so he wasn't even thinking about like I might have to fight this guy. But then when he became an actual uh, possible opponent, he became a bomb, and he not then, but literally yeah. right before that, he was saying, "This this guy's the best fighter on earth." <laughs> yeah, uh, I think what video was that that he goes, "Manny Pacquiao ran through Cotto. Who runs through Cotto?" <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, he gotta be on some shit. No one just runs through Cotto like that. Like and Floyd. Like, is standing there just and doesn't say a word. And he should have been like, Dad, I'll run through Kodo like that. Like, what do you, what do you mean? He's saying he's better than me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, if you have that. I'm saying, son, yeah, he's better. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's why we ain't fighting them. And that's why, you know, when Floyd went on to be like, yeah, I am a coward, but I'm rich. You know, I'm a rich coward. Yeah. Uh, I I was never, dude, if I, was, if I had the ability of pretty boy Floyd, and I had the, the pro hours of dissecting my opponents in a mental aspect like that with my physical ability and my speed, and even though I got crack baby hands and I can't pound them, you know, so much, I will never, first of all, never say, oh, uh, you know, about Kodo and then Pacquiao ran through him and, and then fanboy for him and all this other stuff. Hell no, nah, because I know later on you're going to have to run through me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Hell no. My mentality would be too damn strong for that. It, it really showed the. Uh, I heard Floyd Sr. say one time, the only time, uh, if, if at one point he said that uh, he was scared uh, when his son was going to fight Diego Corrales uh, because uh, of how dangerous a puncher uh, Corrales was. Um, yeah, but he. So he, just he knew. Bit, he, dude, his. Yeah, oh my God. He wanted. Fucking no parts of Pacquiao for his son. None. None. They stayed away from him for five years. Five years. So five, I thought it was like six, six and a half. Yeah, like that. More than five, but yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Because I'm not even counting, like, basically the years that he employed, because Floyd retired for fucking almost two years, too. Yeah. No. Yeah, they say he ducked them for seven. Yeah, you count the years he retired also. He, was he, he retired, what, four years? He did two years on one level, and then he came back, did another two years on another level. So technically, yeah, it was about seven years, basically. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then uh, Johnny Boy was killing it. He was like, so you... Here you are going to China, going to go fight <laughs> to the guild just to survive, just to yeah. survive. Because he got hurt twice, bad, like hurt good twice, just like just to survive. He had to be juiced to the guild. If he wasn't on that shit, he wouldn't have been able to absorb those shots. You know, he would have hit them ropes and then got pounded and taken out. But you know, yeah. come on. I mean, we know what that does for your recuperative skills. I mean, shit. And we know how bad he was, how bad he was hurt, because what, I think after the fourth, I think he took the entire fifth round off, too. And then I think in the tenth, he got hurt, right? And I think, also, I think he took, like, basically the entire eleventh off, too. Like, he yeah. was, like, significantly hurt. Like, so he wasn't even giving Manny a chance. He was just fighting to survive. That's yep. all it was. And that was a one arm midget, like he said. Yep. <laughs> one arm midget yep. fighting you was fucking much naturally bigger fighter, juice to the gills, and couldn't do shit. Couldn't do yeah. shit. Could land a little jab, a little pot shot here and there, and that was it. To uh, Artorias Boxing, when he did one of his things with Madonna, how Floyd Mayweather on, I think it was the second fight, or was it the first fight? He had on the he had on the leopard print. Uh, the, who? Say that again. Floyd had on a leopard print trunks against Madonna one of the I don't know if it was the first or the second well anyway he when Madonna hit him with that overhand right and Floyd turned around uh went to his corner he had the stinky leg one of his legs was was yeah, was fight. yeah. Hang on. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yeah he fucked him up he's lucky that was the end of the round that was like right at the end of the round too. well Kenny Bayless was helping him man oh Dude, that was disgusting. Oh, uh, Floyd was just allowed to just, uh, you know, lunge in one, one, two, grab, clinch. Yeah, I oh, think uh, Artorius did a grab, a grab count, 
of like 72 times that Floyd grabbed him. <laughs> yep. And then you can watch many other, you know, just undercard fights where, you know, a guy clinches two times in the first round and is warned sternly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and yeah, the like, God, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah. I like the way Mike Tyson depicted. He said, "To go in a fight, you gotta be honest. You gotta have this in your mindset. You did knock that motherfucker out. <laughs> Ain't no touching, touching gloves, being friends. Fuck that." <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, he was never friendly with one person he fought. Like he might have been friendly like after they both retired, but never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't even cool with uh, many fighters of other divisions, if I recall. I don't even think he respected any other like He was just God, period. Yeah, especially in his prime. Yeah, yeah, that's just how he was. He just had that gladiator mentality. I'm coming in there, I'm going to do you. That's it. And if you hit me, I'm going to hit you harder and with more combinations. <laughs> That's my type of fighter. Uh, Alright, uh, the movie's done. It's ready to watch. I am. There you go. Movie time. Two hours, uh, 14 to be about 15 minutes. Yep, that's right. Uh, I, I gotta get my old man rest. Thank you for the, uh, movie. Yeah, just let me know if it was, if it was, all what I explained. I will. I definitely will, for sure. All right, cool. Uh, Peace yeah, out, everybody. Something up on here, too, man. I appreciate it big time. Yeah, yeah. Always support up. everybody's channel, man. Everybody I go into their channel, even the Super Chat people, I go see if you have any content, and I, uh, I look at it. So I support everybody. So. Hey. Uh, well, if you got good stuff. Precise. Is that a, um? Is this just a name, or are you uh, gonna be doing videos on that uh, with that channel? Because it seems like the title for a channel, not just the title for a name. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? I'm wondering if Precise plans on making videos again. Oh yeah, he does. He I saw a couple of his videos. Like I've, I've, I actually did see uh, one, one, but I think I saw it on. Uh, Dude, you got to see the new one that he just made. Oh, it was on Carnival, but I didn't know you have vids on Fight Film. Oh, okay, I'm going there right now. Dude, you got to look at the one he just made about Canelo. That was hysterical. Uh, see what the fuck I didn't know. Hey, shout us out to Precise, man. That that was that yeah. made my day, man. Well, I subscribe to Fight Film. Oh, I'm already subscribed to it. Oh, okay. What the fuck? Why didn't that new one come up on my recommended? I haven't been uh got it the whole bell. You bring no notifications at all. Oh, the one I watched was this one. <clears throat> so the last one I watched was two weeks ago, actually. That's the last time I one of these ones popped up. It was Sergey Kovalev bodies in, uh, Anthony Yard. Uh, nah, he yeah. got two more. He got two more after that, I believe. Well, dude, he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw the Canelo one, the new Canelo one, today. That shit made my day as soon as I got out of a, a day of work and my mind was like I needed some type of uh, uh, substance that was, you know, enlightening. And when I went in there, man, I felt it. Yo, Precise, you did a great job, bro. I thought that, uh, yeah, I thought that Precise video I watched was on <clears throat> Fight Film. Yeah, I thought it was on a different channel. It was also like Unrivals, uh, 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 
Like he said, I was stoned totally and totally forgot how, where I even watched it. Yeah, but the other ones, I would have watched them. They definitely just didn't even fucking come up. I clicked the bell now, though. I didn't have the bell for before, so that could be why. Yeah. I mean, that, that one, I rate uh, Unrivals, uh, one with Luis Ortiz with that. <laughs> <laughs> that one was funny too, man. <laughs> hey, everybody, uh, yeah, appreciate it, all the. No, no. <clears throat> Yo, peace out, everybody. I'm out. Yep, yep we're getting out of here, people. Again, thanks for stopping by, G Bug. Uh, no problem, sub- my brother. Go sub the fight film, that channel right there for sure. Uh, top of the line. Boxing knowledge, which you'll receive over there for sure. Uh, it's not like a car radio thief says Cronbread. <coughs> yeah, that is what they mean by a box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What's up, Cron, by the way? Uh, yeah. Alright, peace, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Got some shit to do tomorrow. I'm not sure uh, if I'll be on or not. Um, no, man, you lost the ball. I think he won. And I think the fight film proves that at minimum Floyd could barely beat a one armed midget, as he said. Uh, wow, juice to the gills. Yeah, I think it says it all. It, it proves that Manny was the greater fighter all along, and he's terrified to give him a rematch. So, hey, I think you're mad that your boy is a coward and won't fucking give him a rematch. But <coughs> we'll uh, we'll continue this uh, tomorrow. Peace, fellas. the ropes there pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it was, definitely. He's a fast reflex fighter. He should be able to. But it was a good job, yeah. See, if if Pelton had a better hook, he might have been able to do something. But bam! Oh, good body shot. He should have put a little more into it, but it was still solid. Good little something. A little more. Just wrestling, doing nothing. Just kind of trying to rub his bristly hair into your eyeballs. Like, you know, irritate the, the skin around your eye to try and you know, make it easier to cut later on. Yeah, yeah. It's a tactic he doesn't ever. Hey, you got, you got me thinking now. Hey, boxers, they should shave their arms about two days before the fight. You get that stubble on their arms. <laughs> now you got something you can rub yeah. in a little bit. Yeah, oh, and that shit is sharp. Oh, man. You're not even kidding. That would be brutal. It's not let's even. Not, the... Let's not give them any ideas. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, complete dominance by Ward, uh, or I mean by Kovalev in the first minute at least. Let's see where this leads. Nothing. But why did he even shoot? Why did Ward even shoot that as low as he did? Granted, it was blocked, but why did he even jab that low? He really jabbed to, like, try and hit, like, here. Let's just watch that again. Did that? Or did he really aim as low as it looked? Because I know it was parried, so maybe he just got it parried down. But he really looked like he went to jab low. Yeah, yeah he jabbed just low, yeah. He tried to hit right basically at the, uh, the very top of your thigh. Good jab. Yeah. Wait. Check this out. I noticed this in the first fight. This is good, man. I'm putting this to 2-5 here. <laughs> All right. After he lands that shot on Cove, um, watch. He's going to... He lands a left here. Ward, that is. Bam. Okay. Now they're going to clinch up. Now, watch what he does with this hand. He's going to kind of tuck his elbow into his hip and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, Carl Frosch type punch but punch him 
Weeks is going to step around so you can't see exactly where it lands, but watch the trajectory. It definitely lands about right here. <laughs> and look where Weeks is at to see as he's stepping around. He's going to see this blow. A vicious hook, like a hook out to the thigh. Watch this guy. What? Oh! <laughs> I caught that earlier. Uh, you couldn't really see exactly where it landed, but oh yeah. That's a dead leg. Yeah, yeah, there's de exactly. The complete and utter foul yeah. right in front of Weeks, and he did nothing. And instead, he's bitching at Kovalev. Look at him. Look at him. Say, no, don't hold his head down. Yeah. <sighs> Bitch at you. <laughs> that was probably the most effective. Uh, that was the, the the best two punches of the fight uh, from Ward. That good jab followed by the hook to the thigh. He gave him a fucking Charlie horse. Good old fashioned Charlie horse. This is the first round, man, and he's already resorting to that shit. Look at it. Look at Ward blinking his eyes, man. You gotta really look at him blinking like hard. What's that indicating to you if he's blinking hard? He's, uh... He got rattled? Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere for sure. I think they exchanged jabs earlier in the middle of the ring. Like, right before the, uh... Right before that Charlie Horse punch. They both came in with the jabs, and you could see on board space he took one. Something, something hurt him. Something did. I mean, uh, that's what... That's the sign I'm seeing for sure. But he's like, woo! Basically, <laughs> damn. Okay, let me let me get my bearings back. Come on, cause uh, you know who knows sure, what. Okay. what he, oh, he's it's thankful like that could have done it. Yeah, thankfully that missed for him. He just grazed him. But just look at this. Just hold. But for the record, people, I can pull up the Marcus of Queensberry rules. Holding and hitting is illegal. You see, he's holding Kovalev's left arm, holding it completely, and then hooking him with the right. That's not inside fighting. That's nothing of the sort. Holding and hitting. It's 100% a foul. Okay? Not even uh, disputable. It's not a tactic. It's a illegal. 100% illegal. You know, in fighting, totally different. This isn't in fighting. This is holding and hitting. That's what Ward does. You know, that's not like uh, arm control either, or control of you know head control, control in one's head. Uh, those are all you know valid, total legal techniques. Um, just controlling your opponent legally, but this is uh, an illegal way to control your opponent. You know? Once you add the hit in there, especially. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Adding the hit in there. I mean, clinching alone again, but that's not as bad as. Uh, the holding and hitting, by no means. Such bullshit. I hate this fight, man. Uh, Y'all, yeah, oh, turned a, he's still blinking, Ward is. Turned a lot of people off from boxing for a long time. Like, uh, it didn't, it didn't, this ain't the fight that ruined it for me, it certainly helped. Uh, no one fight ruined it for me. So, but I do know people that said they literally quit watching boxing after the first one of their fights. Then I heard more say after the second one, more uh, other people were like, "Yeah, that one was the end for me." <laughs> like, are boxing promoters happy about this shit? Like, shouldn't they fucking chase fucking James Prince right out the business? Never mind. For how many fucking person. Fans he chased out of the sport. Okay, hold on, right there. We just saw that hook. Let me see that hook again from Ward. It was partially blocked. Partially, partially blocked, blocked, okay. From the angles. Watch, 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 watch. Yeah, let's watch that again. We can even slow it down if we need to, but partially blocked. <clears throat> it's majority blocked. But some gets through. But he didn't move uh, because of power or anything like that. He's literally like repositioning himself because he was kind of expecting something else to come, I think. Because I've, I've watched this earlier myself and was like, hmm, well, what happened there? 
So I kind of already studied that. I went back too far, but here it's coming up. And Ward loves to uh, clinch and just tuck his chin into like his chest and just dig his like bristly hair into your eyes. <laughs> It's so fucked up. Well, <laughs> boom, that's the uh that's when I was talking about uh Kovalev just like posing and it costing him, you know. I have yeah. lackadaisical moments where he can't do that, you know, versus a guy like uh okay. explosive fighters like Canelo. Um he has when I when Ooh. I say he needs to stay focused, you know, at all times he, he's like real he gets real flat footed in front of Ward, he's just posing in front of him like Hey, yeah, I'm just kind of here. And Ward instantly senses it, so he Finding just slings a, 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 basically a, a faint, with the faint jab, boom! Right, and it lands clean. Luckily, it don't hurt him at all, uh, Kovalev at all, but, uh, yeah, it was, he should have, he should have been completely prepared to either, he should have been up on his toes ready to take a step back, um, or catch Ward with his own jab coming in, but, None. He was completely dazed. He was off in his own little, you know, fantasy world. Just dazed, you know, not paying attention, not focused. But the last couple fights we've seen, uh, boom. Yeah. Quick one down the pipe. Should have been up on his toes. He can't just walk in and stand in front of your guy like that. Especially a quick handed guy. Not necessarily that quick, but quick enough. He didn't even, uh, he didn't even, <laughs> he was so out of it, the punch landed perfectly flush. He didn't even remotely try to roll with it or lean to his left or right or anything. It was just, bang, pure. Like, he didn't even see it until it must have been a millimeter away. Like, that's not paying attention. That's just totally, you know, losing your focus mid-round. And it's only the first. But, oh, good retaliation. Very stiff jab, right between the eyes. But, look how... Look how Ward has to bite. I'm rewind. Has to bite it every faint Kovalev throws, man. Like, if he just moves Ward, you... Like, and this is... Uh, uh, again, like uh, some people would say, pound for pound number one after this fight, right? So, so-called elite fighter, whatever. I don't call it, whatever you want to rate him. Uh, I'll say B level, but uh, oh, fast reflexes, good amateur pedigree, professional. He's a fucking B plus fighter, at best. Um, uh, however, uh, he's good. At, he's good enough. He was on the shit. You know, he was very well trained for this fight, and. Um, Good reflexes, but everyone, even Andre Ward, you, everyone bites on his feints because you have to. Because if you, if couldn't, what if you don't, and it's the real deal, it could be night night. <laughs> you know? Yeah, night night. Because you didn't, you didn't uh, think you thought that was one of his feints, and he's so good at them. Because. I don't think he knows which is going to be a feint and which ain't. You know what I mean? He's like almost like Ali. Like he's about to throw it and then he's like, and eh, nah. Or, and then, yeah, let's let's go ahead and throw it. So the, you really just never know. But Ward, Ward's about to go on for the attack and uh, Cove stops it just with a feint. Just watch this. Ah, let me, yeah, uh, yeah, you better stop, yeah. Drax, because I might just stiff, stiff you right in the face with my jab. Like he has to look everything he has to bite boom and then he ate one when he didn't he didn't and look what happened he ate one see why you gotta you gotta this man's like faints uh have to be used versus canelo because they're so deadly they're so effective because it opens up him to actually be able to land his uh jab up top into the body then that opens the right hand up yeah man faints are key in kovalev's yeah. game the key tactic. Who's this, Dave Chappelle? Yep. Yeah, you know, that jab to the body could really work real well for Kovalev, especially when, uh, if he catches Canelo doing the shoulder roll, leaning back, mm -hmm. leaving his body open. Yeah, well, uh, I'm telling you, I wouldn't, a lot of people think go for his body early. I'd 
strictly work just jab to to his head and upper uh, torso. I wouldn't go so much uh, below the solar plexus because you're leaving yourself open early on. Canelo is obviously uh, at any time he's explosive, fast-handed, and he's quick for the counter. So if you go to his body, uh, you know. Kovalev being the taller fighter and with longer arms, he's going to have to reach down leaving his chin open unless it's like a, a, a long rangey straight one two to the body uh, but anything and it has to be very well placed like, uh, like I'm saying he has to master the range in that training camp uh, otherwise going to the body a little too early could get him countered and you know maybe hurt uh, yeah okay he's, okay he's gonna be coming in okay. and then that that's counter that's gonna move. amplify the impact you know you know to well, one he guy's coming forward the other guy catches him coming in yeah. boom uh could double that impact or what whatnot uh so i'd really aim for the upper torso i'd still go for the body but mostly like the pecs uh, the center of the chest, you know, yep, uh, sternum and uh, the, the, the you know sternum, solar plexus, really break all that down. The shoulders, the clavicles, you know, fuck all that up. Pound on the shoulders with the you know the the uh, with the the uh, the right hand, they jab him to the chest and just slam a right hand into his arms. I mean, like for real, just beat him. That's how I'd attack his body in the earlier rounds. Then I'd go a bit lower to the actual liver and, you know, uh, right hooks to, you know, up under the ribs and things like that. And, um, All right. you know, that's what I would recommend anyway. Because that look at, uh, I mean, Golovkin surely wasn't a different body style and everything. And he doesn't, you know, but uh, he didn't go to Canelo's body uh, like everyone would would have wished he would have. But he couldn't. That's the reason he didn't. If he could, he would. It's fucking dangerous. Yeah. What do you do? You're liable to get smashed in your mouth. Like, uh, Canelo's good at that shit, so you gotta be very careful, man. Very careful. So, how you do it, he's gotta beat up his upper half of his body. You know what I mean? Like, imagine Fight Night. <laughs> you, you ever play Fight Night? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, like, uh, they show the damage you created? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like that. Make that, like, line go up the center. Uh, like, his sternum. Make his pecs all fucked up. Yeah, just beat him down like that. You know how it is, man. Yeah, all okay. upper body punishment. With the jab and the two. Just keep, And then jab him a lot to the head, obviously. And oh, yeah, of keep him guessing. Keep him at a range. Frustrate the shit out of him. Really make him, uh, keep him at a range to where when he... He starts to actually ask to get desperate and leap in with like lead lead hooks and lead rights and just don't even necessarily counter with more than a jab, but just make him whiff, you know, and start frustrating him. Uh, I mean, Kobe can easily win the fight. He just got to stay disciplined and come in shape. If he's in shape and disciplined, he wins the fight Turn easily. Left. That's why I just don't think the fight is all that realistic, man. I just, man, props to Canelo if they really take it with no stipulations, which, again, I can't even see what stipulation they would ask for because uh, none of them make sense with a guy like Kovalev. They wouldn't uh, matter. So uh, unless it was a catchweight, but then there's, like, there's no point for the fight to even happen. So I don't think a catchweight's happening either. Uh, so I, I'm really skeptical. I will give Canelo a shit ton of props if he actually – fight this guy uh november 2nd or not um that he'll get his props because man is it gonna be a tough one as long as uh, i just the only thing is i hope uh let's see what the chat's saying i hope um kovalev doesn't just come in for like a payday he needs to come in to win oh someone gave a donation here oh sorry i didn't see that uh uh, I should. Uh, I hope he doesn't come in just for a payday. He needs to realize there more. There's more money in winning the rematch, like someone pointed out last night, and uh, you know, getting the the lion share or at least a much bigger uh, purse in a rematch if he beats Canelo. So, you know, don't think of this as the payday. You know, uh, G Boogie with the fiver. Thank you very much, brother. 
Hit the like button. Stop low blowing like Andre Ward. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Word. Thank you, G Boy. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hold, Hold up two secs. I'm I'm gonna jump over. Right. Go, go, go. I'm gonna read some of my chats. Uh, Manny Fresh. I expected more from Kovalev in terms of his jab, like he did with Anthony Yard. Ward lands the right hand. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He should have worked. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He remember again. He didn't have a, a trainer for this fight, man. Like him and J J D J weren't even talking at all, at all. And he didn't even bring in like anyone else to to train him or anything. He just trained himself for this fight. Uh, but either way, yeah. Come on, he still should have stuck to the jab. Kovalev, like that's the just. Damn near the only punch he needs to beat 99% of the fucking guys in the division. Just a jab. Ward is not an all-time great, says Bay Area. Someone from the Bay Area says Ward is not an all-time great. That tells you something, right? Agreed. What up? Uh, what up? What up? When Kovalev drives him back uh, in the clinch, that's when the ref decides to break and reset them. LOL. Good point. Good catch. I didn't even notice that, actually. Ward is awful to watch, in my opinion, says Quags. He really is, huh? Kovalev is going to get broken down to the body by Canelo and stop in the seven. He could if uh, he allows Canelo to get on the inside. That's what I'm saying. He can't, uh, you know, just really focus in camp on staying up on him, uh, up on his toes, ready to, you know, make quick, uh, quick in and out movements for 12 12 rounds, uh, three minutes of every round. Uh, he, yeah, he was, he looked good in his last fight, man. He, and, if, shit, if he's, uh, picking a train he can't basically right back up, he'll be even, in even better shape. Ward pulling a Hopkins, uh, punch and keeping his head in first, yeah. They like Ward because right. he's quote unquote black. Ward fans need a father figure to teach them right from wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ward's dad is Caucasian. Yeah. Turn right. Hey, he's, a, he's white or black. He's a dirty fucking fighter. I don't give a shit. He could be cousins with Mickey. Yeah, he might be, right? Somewhere down the line. Yeah, I bet Mickey would hate if you said that. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kovalev should have uh, just returned a low blow or two. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I think he should have elbowed. Fuck a low blow. Elbow. I, w I said, elbow him right in his eye socket as hard as you can. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a shit? Uh, but Kovalev is... Dude, these Eastern Europeans, they will not foul. They don't care. Look at Loma with Salido. Uh, look at, you know, uh, how many... All the fights uh, Golovkin gets fouled. Kovalev, they don't retaliate with fouls. They won't do it. They feel if they have to retaliate with fouls in order to win, it's not a win. They don't do it. They will not do it. I'm like, uh, oh, I saw a great uh, Jalen Rose interview today. I'm about to pull it up. It fits perfectly here. Jalen Rose did a, a Vlad TV uh, interview, and he was talking about when he purposely hurt Kobe. Uh, just And he was like, uh, he purposely hurt Kobe uh, in a playoffs one year and took him out of the game. And he did it on purpose just to win the game because he wanted to win so bad. So he wanted to get, rid get their best player out. And he looks back on it, and he goes, he goes, I look back with such fucking shame. Like, my guy, I can't believe I did that. It was, like, one of the worst things he ever, like, you could see, like, the guy felt so horrible that he stooped so low. Like, I wonder if Ward, like, Jalen Rose completely spoke about it. Like, yeah, I felt like I was such a dirtbag. Like, oh, my God. I, like, I, I still live with the shame of it any time I think about it. I wonder if Ward has shame. Because he's been doing it since day one of his career, man. Until the, the day he retired. He's probably a fucking sociopath. You know what I mean? Like, a pure sociopath. Yeah, man. Because Jalen Rose before, just took a guy out for a game. Just took a guy out for a game. And, like, has, you know, deep shame about it. And he was like, because his words were, because I had to... I felt the need to cheat in order to win. And the, the shame of that eats at me every time I think about it. And 
that's what this guy Ward did for a fucking career, man. Uh, yeah. Think about it. Well, he did retire immediately after. <laughs> so yeah. you kind of you, you may be able to say because he had to wait into yeah. that or civil, better be uh, Adonis the Unify. Oh yeah, Mosdick. Uh, or a Kovalev rematch. I mean, yeah, he, he didn't want none of it. He did a war. He did a, a, a Floyd Mayweather, I mean, in what, like uh, 2009? What was it, 2009? When it was Prime, uh, Cotto, Margo, P-Will, Pacquiao. I mean, just like it was just retarded, right? Like the, 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 the division was terrifying. Floyd up and goes, you know what? I, I, I think I'm going to retire. <laughs> yeah, and dipped for two years until they all sorted themselves out and shit, and then came back and still fought a blow a lightweight, fought a lightweight, not like a, a blown up lightweight. Yeah, funny, funny, and I think that's what Ward's doing right now. I, that's what he is doing right now. He's like, holy hell, they're killers. I'm again gonna do a punk move, avoid. I'm gonna stay out of the game for about two years till they all fight each other. And I'm gonna jump back in and fight some cherry that I'm. I'm mean, he's gonna pick probably three cherries, you know, just like he did last time. Hey yo, did you uh, did you did you hear he was probing Kelly Pavlik? Had a possibility of a comeback fight for both of them. You're shitting me, right? Yeah, Kelly Pavlik was on Joe Rogan, and he mentioned Andre Ward uh, approached him semi recently. Last thing. <coughs> That is, see what I'm talking about? That is disgusting. Oh, that is disgusting. Man. <coughs> it's back in the day, the mob would have kneecapped the fucking guy like this. Oh, true that. Oh my god. For real, for real. Um, I saw that thing they were talking about with uh, Mayweather or not Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr. and Tyson, uh, possibly fighting back in the day, and Roy wanting more than forty million dollars, and uh, James Prince told the story to Andre Ward. That uh, Roy was getting forty million guaranteed plus back end on the pay per view, and said he wanted more, uh, and instead went and fought Tarver rather than had one more fight at heavyweight, then fight Tyson was his other option. But he, <laughs> ew, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for no, forty mil, for forty mil. No, I don't know if it's true or not, but that that's uh, a story. That uh, Jay Prince privately told Ward, and Ward told publicly, <laughs> like a great guy. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it's true. I mean, I seen, I seen uh, Roy's dad. Now, granted, his, his dad don't have much say in his career, and never really did. Uh, but he said that they would have never fought. But again, what does that really mean? Not much, I guess. Yeah. It was a, you know, that would have been a prime, juiced out, heavyweight Roy versus shell of himself, uh, Mike Tyson. But boy, would it have done huge numbers. Uh, Dude, uh, I'm not sure of your age. I, think, I believe you're a bit old, you're old enough to remember the, when the we, they were even talking about that fight. Exit. Right? Like, uh, did you watch uh, Roy fight Ruiz? Live? Did you watch that fight? No, I didn't catch that. That was what year was that? Exit now. Uh, let's say like two thousand two ish, something like that. Okay, that was just a little bit before. That was a little bit before I started watching boxing. Okay, I got you. I got you. It uh, was like three, with me. There's like two eras. There's like two thousand five to two thousand seven, and then a big gap of like ten years, and then I started watching again in like a few years ago. Yeah, even though Tyson wasn't looking good at all, <laughs> uh, the moment uh, Roy went up and you know grabbed up the title, a lot of people were like. Back in the day, we used to talk on uh, boxing website forums. There was no like, yep. we, we didn't have this. We either conversed yeah. through boxing forums or um, like uh, AOL had a forum board. So you could use like their forum board, which is hilarious. Uh, oh, I remember those days. I was members of them all, dude. I've been talking boxing online since I was fucking. Oh my god, since the moment I had the internet. 
So yeah, you know, I got two two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. BDA both. Did you ever like? Did you know BDA back in the day? Because he said he was always on the forums. I uh, no, I don't even remember what my names would have been. True. Where? I went by Champagne a lot. Champagne. That guy Mike Bartho uh, that I uh, I told you I was the, the old guy who would come to my gym who fought uh, Fritzy Zivic for the lightweight title and got knocked out four by um. He went the distance with Zivic, but got uh, sparked in, four, in the fourth by Burley. But uh, okay. he never said champion. He go, I fought for the, I fought the champion of the world, the champion too. It's funny though. Oh, well, yeah, what you talking about? I remember Mike around that area, uh, around that era, because he had just retired, well, I think, to. Um, McBride, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, like he was. I can't. I'd have to look at exactly when this was. Like he had. I think he had already lost to Lewis and everything. Like he was so on the downside, and people still were clamoring for him and Roy. <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, but, it's a huge yeah. name fight. Who do you think would have won that at that time? Like two thousand two, three ish. Well, I mean, if Roy and I got just stayed at heavyweight, uh, he yeah. Won. He would have won. True, yeah, because he, he hadn't come back Take down yet. Exit. Yeah, he was way too fast. Oh, my God. He had had a field day. Yeah. yeah. Roy thought uh, getting bing, 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 or, or Tyson thought getting bing, 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 exit bing, 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 over and over by Evander was bad. Imagine fucking Roy Jones Jr. at heavyweight all juice to the gills versus uh, older and slower Tyson. Than the one that fought Holyfield. Oh, that one's hard to watch. Yeah, oh, it, it would have been brutal for me. I didn't want to see it back then, but a lot of people sure did. Sure did. But yeah, according to Ward, Roy turned down fucking 40 plus million to fight him, which is nuts. I bet. I've never heard Tyson say that, which uh, he might not even have known about it. Who knows? He probably had deals with potential deals with everybody in the business near his weight because everyone wanted him he was the money guy right you know yeah. uh, even in his very last fight he was still the money guy it did not matter how many times in a row he lost um uh, but yeah uh he had to have known though because he dude he needed money so bad do you know how pissed he must have been because if Roy was getting 40 Tyson would have had to have at least been getting uh, at, at, at minimum, had him getting twenty. You know, at least twenty. At least. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh yeah, and boy, what when shame. you need money, <laughs> what a fall from grace, money wise. Yeah, really, really. Yo, just a little, a little trivia well, too. Tyson could have destroyed him if, but I mean, this isn't prime Tyson we're talking about here either, man. He got to land on that chin of uh, Roy's. You, you realize that, right? Yeah, you need if you got the power, you got deliver. His first, the first two rounds would have been terrifying for Roy. Uh, terrifying, like a lot of people would have been betting a lot of money on like round round one knockout and round second knockout uh, or second round knockout for Mike Tyson because he would have just came out with balls of the walls in those two rounds. And if Roy survived those two rounds, uh. He would have complete control of the fight and been able to basically, you know, end it whenever he wanted, honestly. But he would have carried it probably, you know, the distance, just like he did with Ruiz. You know? Yeah, true. And just kept pecking him at, pecking at him, and pecking at him, and playing it safe, you know. Who knows? That would have been interesting. Ah, uh, because uh, only imagine if Mike could add a a. a Great second half of his career. If the guy would have just been willing to use PEDs. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if the guy would have just been willing to juice like everyone else. He would have had a trema. He would have probably been the fucking man for ten years straight. You know, but he just wouldn't do it. Hey, you know what? PEDs, steroids might uh give him the fighting will too, because I think that was the biggest thing. I he just yeah. didn't want to fight anymore. Straight yeah, you know, it had nothing to do with ability. He was just, eh, it's not in me anymore. I, don't yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so. I remember like a quote, like uh, I forget yeah. where I heard it, but he was starting up, uh, like he was gonna become a promoter or something, right? And yeah, someone asked yeah. him, Mike, yeah. you know, what do you look for in a young talent? What do they need to have to be a great boxer? And he says, you gotta want to hurt people. 
Absolutely. It's like, fuck, yeah. It's, it ain't that. no, oh, no, uh, you need speed, you need strength, you need jab. No, no, no. No, no. I just said that um, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago on a stream, I noticed the, uh, like, recently sparring with these kids, I don't want to hit them hard anymore. Like, I'm afraid, like, I might hit them hard and hurt one of them or something. Like, what if I hit them with an uppercut and, like, break their nose or, like, cut their eye and they have a cut for the rest of their life because we are like, I don't want to do that to anybody. I don't. Like, back then, I would rip into you and be like, yeah! Like, what about dudes, like, your age? You're saying kids, like... Why? I sh no, no, not at all. Not, not to anybody. Not to anybody, uh-uh. And it's no, these kids were definitely trying to hurt me, too, but it, I didn't... I couldn't... No, yeah. I would you rip through their body with no problem, but... You took uh, the Eastern I, European stance. You didn't give it back. I would, yeah. I would you bit, took well, it, and you said, that's okay. And you I did your thing. Yeah, I mean, you know what, uh... Like, man, you know it can happen, you know? You know, yeah. you know it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's fucked up. You knock their teeth out. You know, fuck their, uh, you know, not knock a retina. You know, just, you know. Dumb shit. Yeah, disrupt their vision for the rest of their life. I mean, disfigure their nose for the rest of their life. That shit used to not, I didn't care about that at all back in the day, but I definitely do now. Definitely do. I was purposely not aiming at their face. I was just aiming, like, on their, like, basically at their, like, temples. Like the sides of their heads, if I was going for a headshot. Or if I was jabbing, it was like a jab towards the top of their head or forehead. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you absolutely kind of don't want to hurt somebody. <laughs> Boy, do you. Boy, do you. And if you don't have that, yeah, you're going to get eaten alive. You're going to get eaten alive. Uh, yeah, man. Speaking about that uh, 2002 to 2005 era, just to mention real quick, let me ask you, what was the first time you saw Riddick Bow fight? Do you remember the first Riddick Bow fight you watched? I had Riddick Bow's uh, Fila shoes in seventh grade. How funny is that? But uh, the yeah. first time I ever saw Riddick Bow fight, what a, uh, I saw him uh, uh, fight in the Olympics. Uh, but, God damn. Uh, yeah, but that was like that was like huge. That was a huge deal back then. Like if you were like, no one missed the Olympics back then. Like you saw mm -hmm. every. Wow. Okay. Uh, like, yeah. Like yeah. You knew everybody. You saw every fucking Olympic event down there. Um, yeah. So it wasn't like yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. It was just, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a rare thing. A lot of people saw me the Olympics. Probably the majority of the country. Uh, but. Um, First time professionally, I can't even remember, man. But all good. I definitely saw all of his big, uh, all of his major fights. Where I'm, because just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, of my uh, perspective no, on boxing. Wait, wait, first wait, time, wait. first time I saw Riddick Bow was in his 2005 comeback oh, against fucking yeah. Bill, Billy Zumbrun. Oh, see that's when awesome. he had Joe Goose in. Riddick, Riddick Bow is awesome. Uh, early in his career, man, he felt yeah. fast though, Mister. Uh, my Greek friend, Pelavakis. Uh, no, I didn't say Tyson was juicing. Uh, he was not juicing. He should have fucking juiced in his, uh, after he post prison, like uh, everybody else was. He wasn't, though. Uh, as you could see, constantly have. The moment, a week after his fight, he was 50 pounds heavier, all fat. You know? I mean, so there was, and his training camps were just fat camps. I mean, yeah. Guy definitely wasn't juiced. Sadly, I mean, it, it would have been incredible to to see because that's when you could uh, you could do whatever you wanted, and there there was no one to even test you. You couldn't get caught. Like <laughs> you couldn't get caught. Like it's crazy. Was, uh, you could do whatever you wanted. Like uh, even Andrew Holyfield for crying out loud. Those are the days, man. Yeah, yeah. Even the fucking bums look tough. I never said he was juicing, dude. Fucking show me a link and article prove that to me. That's a lie. That's a lie. I heard him like I, I, that's a lie. I heard him say he never, never ever touched it. He felt that if you even needed to put that shit in you, that it, that it was time to hang the gloves up because you uh. Clearly, don't have what it takes to be a boxer.
Oh, he said, yeah, he said he used the fucking Wizenator. Yeah, not for fucking juice. He passed it for coke and marijuana, though. <laughs> Talking about that on his show, not for PEDs. What was the fight he went in? He was basically like on coke, they That's said. What, Lou Savarese? Uh, not, not coke, uh, marijuana. Um, uh, Andrew Galata. Uh, Andrew Galata oh. and Savarese. Both of those, he was on weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, weed? He caught a two hundred thousand dollar fine for one of them. I can't remember which one, but one of them fined him two hundred grand. Do you believe that? Two hundred thousand wow. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! But, but that that Lou Savarese knockout, man, he just went he went insane on him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he just didn't stop. Yeah, the ref was like, "Stop!" He was like, "No, no, no, no! I'm not done yet." <laughs> That's the one that it looks like he's on coke. Galata, remember when Galata quit and everyone was bitching at Galata? Dude, he, he threw peeks at him and shit. You know why though? Why? He, he broke. Uh, first of all, Tyson broke a bone in his face. I think two bro two bones in his face, uh, a, a rib or two, and uh, uh, fractured um, parts of his spine. Yeah, like no joke. Like like. Could almost ended the dude's career. Like, yeah, he's talked about it on his podcast where they get deep into like the actual uh, injuries. But yeah, you can look it up. Actual like destroyed that guy in that fight. Like broke his back, his ribs, his face. And uh, I remember his cornerman was calling him an uh, asshole and shoving. Uh, who was that? Was that Duva? Shoving the ring, uh, <laughs> the mouthpiece back back in his, trying to put the Keep mouthpiece right. back in his mouth and, and saying, get the yeah, it was Duva, yeah. out there. Tell him to get back out there. He could have been paralyzed forever. Turn right. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, you gotta start watching Hotbox and uh, Tyson's podcast. They talk about, they say some great stories, stuff that we never knew about. Word, I definitely got to get on that one. I've known about it. I don't know why I'm not listening to it. I just got yeah. so many things I yeah. listen to already, you know. Yeah, I but, hear uh, but like I said, you're also, and it's only once a week. They only come out with an episode a week, so it ain't hard to, you know, fit it in somewhere. I'll get it in. Um, and uh, you don't got to watch them all, because the, I'll, I'll be honest, the first Go 50, like, on. sucked. Because Tyson was so new to it, he didn't even say a word. He just stared. Mm. Um, but now he talks, like, a, the whole goddamn time, <laughs> so it's awesome. Uh, but, like, the last uh, 50 episodes or something, not, not, not 50. Uh, I don't know. Go back to uh, 20. Uh, if it that's a good one, uh, you can keep going further back. Uh, once he start, uh, once you go back far enough, and he's not saying shit, he's that you're not gonna find one where he's ever keep talking. Right. <laughs> he just right. talks now, but once you go back far enough and he's quiet, he's quiet all the previous right. ones also. Mm. Okay, okay. But it, he had to warm up to the whole idea. And not just stories about him. He just tells stories about other boxers he knows. And he's From that era and yeah. probably history, too. He's a great story. Uh, the newer era, like stories of, you know, just him and, you know, uh, guys, you know, like, uh, and, uh, like Miguel Cotto, for example, or someone like that, or just new guys, old guys, anybody. Floyd Mayweather, Pacquiao, uh, the whole way back to, you know, guys like uh, LaMotta or uh, you know, Ali, anything. Whatever, uh, it's amazing. Man. It's amazing. But uh, yeah, let's get back to the fight. Um, because we're we, we've been well, you've been live. You have arrived over an hour now, and you got through one round. You got a good tangent there. For the people who actually want to see, let's see this. I think you're still on a. Uh, 0 0.25. Okay, I am too, huh? No, no. No, you're... I thought I was as well. Still, setting. I'm the boss. Came up with that head. No punch. Just came up with that head. Gotta point that out. Get circled. Cornered. Back against the ropes. See, that kind of shit right there. If he can keep that uh, up on his toes, ready for them 